benefited from a stimulus in the EU. Well, I want to congratulate the FSB for having the first hustings, as they're called, with uh, a number of the candidates. And I wasn't sure if Basel was put himself up as the candidate for NI21, but whoever uh, is the candidate, I think there was m many of us in the room, and you could see the differences of opinion, whether it is Tories in government in London, Dublin, or Brussels. You could see the difference with myself, for instance, and Jim and Diane, both of whom have supported cuts in Europe, and they try to explain it that this is cuts in efficiency and what I would call the travelling circus of us MEPs having to travel over to Strasbourg, 180 million a year. Those are the things that unfortunately that aren't being cut. What's being cut is services and funding for, for instance, common agricultural policy. The British government accepted a 22% cut for Pillar 2. Now, what you'll hear from the others is, oh, but we're still getting the same rate. Yes, we are getting the same rate. We're getting it out of a reduced budget. And that needs to be clearly understood. So the very debate and conversation that you're having here in the Assembly here in the north about welfare reform because let's be very clear the British government are telling us that they could save 100 million from the block grant if welfare reform was introduced. They also said they would have 100 million on this IT system by the 1st of April 2014. Well today is the 4th of April as far as I understand and they have 6,000 on a system that has caused 650 million. It's not working, it's broke. Now this is not just Sinn Féin or Sal Salome saying that welfare reform is wrong, saying that austerity is wrong, saying that cuts are wrong in Brussels, in Dublin and in London. We have all of the bishops in London coming out against the cuts because we know the implication that those who are poor that have already been made tested as being poor and hence that's the reason why they get benefits because they are poor. These are the very people that they want to pay for what happened during the time of the boom and then the crash. I represent the people of Ireland and as a Sinn Féin MEP I represent, I am the voice of all of the people of Ireland and our policy is the same throughout the 32 counties of Ireland, our policy is the same. One of the things that I have discovered when I took on as Sinn Féin MEP, I realised that there was a real dearth of knowledge, particularly for Chambers of Commerce, SMEs and others, so I hosted a number of delegations to bring them over to Europe, to engage with officials and I've also since been engaging with the Chamber of Commerce and others uh, since coming back so that they could pick up in that contact. But I've looked at the work that the First and Deputy First Minister has done, trade missions elsewhere, and the benefits. I, as a, a junior minister, was on, the dis in, was on the executive at the time and we were talking about a jobs fund. Now people thought it was too ambitious that there wouldn't be 4,000, which was the target. 4,000 jobs was to be created by March 2014, and as we stand here today, I know it's 4,000 500. So the executive has reached that target and I think it's the work that has been done by our First and Deputy First Minister that has assisted that. So what I want them to do is to bring the small businesses together into a room with ministers, policy makers and those people who are informed and involved in the decision making process so we can look at how we give assistance to entrepreneurs who want to go forward, that we look at the kind of assistance that we can give here in the north to the small businesses that are doing tremendous work, that are without doubt the lifeblood of our economy and I think they are the very people that can assist us here in the north to correct what needs to happen around the kind of level of unemployment employment that we have here and by them taking on one or two more people you know they, they would they, they would certainly benefit themselves but so would our economy and we would also get people back into work so I wrote to them with this idea asking them to arrange and facilitate such a conference and I hope they look at it positively.
Finally, much talk about a referendum which has the potential of taking Britain out of Europe and indeed by default the six counties. How does that uh, help your debate for strengthening ties, fiscal ties between North and South, developing the East, South or East West corridors, etc., etc.? Well, I think a referendum is up to any democratic government if they want to call a referendum. The unfortunate thing about the conversation in relation to this referendum, once again, as usual, we're totally ignored here in the North with regards to it. Now, for Irish Republicans and for us people that have got an experience with the British government and how they develop policy, that's, policies are going to impact of, in the North with total disregard to us, that is what they do because they really don't care about us. And whether you're uh, a nationalist, a Republican or a unionist from any of those traditions, that's the reality of the British government. So this referendum is not helpful. Um, if the outcome of the referendum was to pull out of Europe, it's absolutely economic basket case that we would become. It makes no economic sense for us to pull out. Could you imagine what it would do to trade and tariff? The tariffs would be put on trade. What we do know is that Ireland and Britain between them um, accrue over somewhere in the region of 120 billion in trade. By, uh, by trading in the EU. Now, who would want to turn their back on that? You know, we in the North would turn into an economic basket case. We are, we have, we're struggling as it is. We have problems and difficulties as it is because the very fact that the border is there, we have two of everything. We have two currencies, we have two trade, we have two agricultural systems, two education systems. The list is endless and it creates duplication. And we need to confront and deal with all of that. So I think that we need to be very clear and our people and our photos need to be very clear Ireland's places in Europe, north and south, now we're against austerity, we're against the kind of rules that come out from the Commission and from the Council. We fight and challenge all of that. We want to reform Europe, we want a better Europe, we want a Europe that puts people before profit and that the lobbyists aren't the people that are in control. So without doubt we want to change Europe, but we need to make clear that our place is in Europe and do you see if the ramifications of this referendum is that the British government decides to lead Europe? I think therein lies an acceleration of the conversation and the discussion about a border poll because we need to be 32 county Ireland getting the benefits from Europe because anybody who thinks that the funding that we currently get whether it's structural funds, whether it's CAP, whether it's peace funding, whether it's access to competitive funding, that somewhere that the British are going to find a conscience and care about us. And that funding stream is going to come over from then to us. Come on, waking up. You know, we need some reality into this debate because all of that will be lost to the North as well as much, much more.